Okay, what's up? It's your boy, Alexio, bro. And I'm here with the video y'all have been waiting for. For weeks. Thank you for all people who've supported me. Um, There's something I'd like to talk about real quick. The text wrestling system. I didn't include this in the slideshow, so... Before we get in, I want to talk about it. Text wrestling's art system of told or non-told express lanes going through the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. You can see them on I-635, I-35E, I-35W, State Highways, 183, 114, and 121, and also Loop 12. Uh, recently, these express lanes were expanded into downtown Dallas via the I-35 East Southern Gateway project. These ones are non-told and they're there to help alleviate traffic. There's also a deck park being built. So all that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so instead of generalizing it, I decided to be specific. To clarify, this is a 50-part series. I'm going to cover every state, every single one. I even started research on Florida. This might take years because content will be weekly because I have school and other responsibilities. And it takes a long time to make these videos. Um, History. Okay, let's read this. Texas was always a big state. So when, the, when the National Highway Defense Act passed in 1956, added to the expansion of urbanization in the state of Texas. Unlike other states, Texas usually didn't use different right-of-way when making these highways. They use existing U.S. highways and upgrade them to freeway standards and added the interstate designation. As this still does happen today, as most of I-69's route from Laredo to Texarkana is being built on the existing US-59. Instead of using new right of way, the first instead of using new right of way, the first interstate was built on was I-45, and it was built on US-75, which then was eliminated south of downtown Dallas and is only north. And also, and during the late nineteen 50s there was a dispute on whether i-35 should go into dallas or fort worth this dispute was settled by having i-35 branch into two spurs of the route called i-35e and i-35w two branches eventually joined back in denton and hillsboro right now I-35 and I and its spurs are one of the most heavily routes under construction. But later on, many highways, like I-10, which you can see in Houston, a magnificent highway. Its interchange with the Grand Parkway is amazing, and also its interchange with the Beltway with Beltway 8 is magnificent were rebuilt and expanded to meet modern highway standards. Okay, impact. Though the interstate system have many positive impacts, there are also many negative ones. There are also lots of displaced homes. Lots some of them were minority groups. Though in East, this happened in East Dallas to build the R.L. Thornton Freeway, I-30. Some neighborhoods were displaced to make the highway. Though Texas is trying to make that right with the I-30 East Corridor Project, which that will reconnect 11 streets and make a depressed freeway between Dolphin Road and downtown Dallas. I-10. The Katy Freeway, the East Freeway, I-10 has many names, but the interstate with the most mileage of all of Texas is going over 850 miles in Texas, but I-10 is mostly known for going to Houston, while it also goes to the states of El Paso and San Antonio. Houston, its portion in Houston is known for a variety of reasons. For starters, it is the widest point in the freeway and the world. 
the KD Freeway at one point combined to a grand total of 26 lanes, range roads included. As the KD Freeway, I-10 has some magnificent interchanges with the Sam Houston Tollway, Beltway 8, I-610, Texas 99, the Grand Parkway, and I-45. That one is so great, but we'll move on. The route goes east to San Antonio, crossing into Louisiana. I-69. The freeway is supposed to go from Laredo, Texarkana. While most of I-69 runs concurrent with US-59, in Victoria, the freeway splits into three branches until the border with Mexico. The branches known as I-69E, I-69C, and I-69W venture into the southern cities of Texas. Um, northward and other in Indiana, I-69's complete completion will actually be finished in that state in the next coming years. <laughs> Interstate Highway 20. I-20 goes to the southern parts of the Dallas and Fort Worth Metroplex and eastward goes into Louisiana, passing through Terrell where it meets up with US-80, I-20's original route before rerouting, and passing through rural area, going ends up going to Louisiana. Westward, however, I-20 go to interchanges with I-635, US-175, I-45, I-35E, US-67, the present George Bush Tollway, State Highway 360, State Highway 183, I-35W, the Chisholm Toll Park, the Chisholm Trail Parkway, US-83 and US-84. I-20 goes through Abilene and, ends, and ultimately ends at I-20. I-20 continued. Recently, Texta launched a study on I-30's East Corridor to determine how to improve the mostly old and rural freeway. Though it goes through lots of rural areas, I-20 has a long distance in Texas spanning over 636 miles. Most of the freeway was built in the 1960s and 70s. Though I-20 was originally a turnpike that headed into downtown Dallas, it was eventually rerouted southeast to its current route. After I-635 Southern end the I-20, the freeway becomes the LBJ Freeway for the next 30 miles. <laughs> I-27. Okay, I-27 is a freeway that runs from Lubbock to Amarillo, passing through mostly urban areas and ending at I-40 in Amarillo. While there are plans to extend I-27 to Mexico as part of the Ports to Plains Corridor that will go from Laredo all the way to Canada border, Texas has yet to give a date when construction is going to happen. Spur routes. Spur routes, or three-digit interstates, are highways interstates that branch off a major interstate. For example, I-820 branches off I-20, hence the last two digits are 20. While most three-digit interstates go through urban area areas and ending outside of it, I-635 is the most notorious for having the most traffic off any spur route in Texas, as it forms a semicircle running from Grapevine to Balch Springs. This is the one I travel the most as I live in Dallas County. Each major urban city in Texas has at least one spur route. Spirats continued. For Dallas and Fort Worth, we have I-35E, I-35W, I-635, and I-820. Houston has I-610, a spur of I-10, which is a complete loop around the city of Houston. These spur routes intersect the main arterial roads in the county slash city they serve. There are cases when spur routes run concurrent with the aforementioned parent highway. I-69, I-49, D5, the Capitol Beltway, run concurrent in Maryland. More about that in my interstate video about Maryland coming in the next months. There's also a spur route for downtown Dallas. The unsigned I-10 
three forty five, which I addressed in another in another video, which runs for one point four miles and links I forty five and US seventy five in Dallas. The longest of these spur routes in Texas is I six ten, the thirty eight mile loop around the city of the inner city section of Houston. I fourteen, the Freedus Freeway is currently only about twenty five miles right now. As the section runs concurrent with US 190, as it's called the 14th Amendment Freeway, and has expanded designation is signed to law, signed into law by Congress in 2021. Now I-14 is going to be about 1.3 thousand miles. And will go to five states, including Central Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. And okay, this is here's a conclusion. Um, yeah, this was shorter than lots of y'all expected. Me too. To be frank, Texas is doing an amazing job of maintaining the interstate system. Right now, there are many highways planned to cross these interstates, including Loop Nine, Texas One Seventy, the Eastern PGB Extension, and the extension of the Grand Park way in Houston. Tech, currently, Texas is upgrading many freeways in need of it, and many projects are being planned and studied. As a last note, please watch out for next Friday, because if I'm able to have enough time, I will post the next video in this series about Florida. We'll see y'all next week. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and please like. So I because I will be working hard on the next video and it should be out in a week. I just have to become familiar with the freeways in Florida. Bye. What's up? It's your boy Lexi Elba back at it again with a brand new video. And um, uh, today we're going to be talking about Texas and Arizona state highways. The reason why I chose this was because it's been an idea I've had for a while since like uh, 2022, um, but never really fully executed out until recently this year. So happy new year, everyone, and uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, so we'll be starting with Texas 121. Uh, Texas 121 connects Fort Worth with Melissa and uh, runs from State Highway 78 in Bonham. To I 35W in Fort Worth. It is known in Texas for the section between State Highway 183 and Texas 114 as it connects with Fort Worth with the DFW Airport and goes through the cities of Grapevine, Bedford, and Euless. Also, north, it bypasses the city of Dallas but goes through the DFW Metroplex as the Sam Rayburn Tollway, which ends at US 75. After that, 121, uh, Joins up, joins up with uh, US 75 going northbound, and then it splits a few miles later, like just in Melissa, and then uh, and it goes northward there, and as a Sam Rayburn Highway, but it's more of a surface street because if you've ever seen it, it turns back into like what say per se, like if you ever seen US uh 380 now, it say it looks like that. This yeah. Arizona Loop 12. Well, this is one of my favorite freeways, I have to admit. And, uh, yeah, I've kind of been fascinated with it ever since I first did the Arizona uh, video back then. So I guess I might as well talk about it because it hardly got talked about in that video. Um, <laughs> Phoenix's premier, uh, premier uh, semi-loop that was a part of Arizona's plan for freeways in Phoenix was co finally completed in 2019. But Ed, pa uh, Ed Pass, the freeway portion was completed then uh, after years of blocking opposition before the 1980s. Known as either the Ed Pastor Freeway, South Mountain Freeway, or the San Tan Freeway. Also, the Red Mountain Freeway, I forgot to say that. Um, running for 78 miles from I 10 to US 60. It, inter it goes by, has interchanges with Loop 101, US 60, State Road 87. State Road 24, State Road 143, and I-10. Most of stack interchange, because, you know, same goes with Loop 21. Like, in between, before it ends at a specific freeway, yeah, there's still stack interchanges, and, yeah. Uh, 
Um, Arizona Loop 101 finished in 2002. The 61 mile loop ends at I 10 and Loop 202, going about going with about at least three lanes in each direction, connecting with Interstate 17, State Road 51, Loop 202, and uh, US 60. Um, this uh, freeway carries a great deal of traffic and it's just pure amazing because Arizona freeways are probably. Like, I'm usually split between which highways look the best, Arizona or Texas, and they never fail to disappoint. But Colorado's a very good mention. Utah, too, because when some of these highways peak, um, they're very good. They're very good. Um, Arizona Loop 303, a relatively new freeway that's not complete, unlike the other two fully constructed major loops talked about in this video. It's safe for projects extended from Van Burn Street to MC85, known as the Bob Stump Memorial Parkway it is sometimes a surface street and sometimes a freeway like a Loop 12, which will probably be last and talked about. Texas 78. This state highway runs from the Oklahoma state line to I-30 in southeast Dallas. Texas 78 primarily follows surface roads in Garland and in Dallas. It is known as Garland Road and Slash Avenue in part of Dallas and Garland where it crosses I-635. At a point in Garland, it goes up north and becomes a uh, Levon Drive and meets up with the uh, President George Bush Tollway, also known as State Highway 161. And goes towards Wiley, Sackchase, Levon, Bonham, uh, that's where 121 ends, ending at the Oklahoma State Line. South of I-635, it veneers into Dallas as Garland Road, then East Grand Avenue, ending at I-30 east of downtown Dallas. Texas 183, from I-35E north to, of north town of, uh, to I-35E north of downtown Dallas to I-20 in Fort Worth. Texas 183 goes through it all, intersecting with I-35E, I-20, I-30, I-820, Texas 114, Loop 12, Texas 121, the President George's Tollway, and uh, I-35W. Known as the airport freeway, it takes off to Irving and uh, plays the biggest part in the Irving interchange. I could do a video about that sometime, but let's start the Interstate series back up. Um, uh, in which it adapts express lanes and travels to forward in route, meeting 121 and running concurrent with it, and then I-820 splitting from it and becoming a surface street that intersects with I-30 and turning back into a freeway, only to end at I-20 in Fort Worth. Texas 114. This freeway. Sometimes good, sometimes a freeway. From the New Mexico state line to Texas 183 in Dallas. Texas 114 is vital in connecting Dallas with Westlake, Roanoke, and Irving. Known as the John Carpenter Freeway, it's also intersection with International Parkway in Grapevine, then taking the name of International Parkway until it returns to a surface street. The most popular section and most most traffic is on uh, the section from International Parkway uh, to South Lake Boulevard, during which it runs concurrent with Texas 121. Another unique feature is for most of the Texas 114 freeway portion is the Tex Express lanes. It's basically like the Texas version of Express lanes. So they're saying Tex Express lanes because you know Express lanes, you can add the T and it sounds more like Tex. Um, and Tex Express lanes, which are usually one lane in each direction, two from William D. T. Avenue to International Parkway. 114 then goes up north to a variety of cities um, and enters Lubbock after thus traveling to New Mexico where it ends at the state line. I'd like to expand a bit on this because um, this section over here, like, you know, after when it goes up north. Yeah, it goes up north, um, but there's more freeway plan. It's, there's a freeway um, uh, extension plan soon because it turns, because, you know, it turns back into a surface street after uh, U.S., after the U.S. 377 uh, intersection. After, and, um,
Yeah, it's supposed to be extended to I-35W soon. Texas 170. So, this might have actually been one of the reasons why the video was... This video was delayed. Um, It was, it was just only recently open. It's a freeway. As of 2023, that runs from I-35W to State Highway 114, known as the Alliance Gateway Freeway. It only runs for six and a half miles, intersecting with U.S. 377 in Fort Worth. It is planned for an extension soon. Okay, Loop 12. This highway primarily stays in Dallas, but outside of downtown, but outside of downtown has most highways in the DFW Metroplex too. It intersects with I-30 in West Dallas, I-35E in South Dallas, and and West Dallas. It intersects uh, with I-35E and I-30 twice. US 175 in Dallas, I-45 in Dallas, US 75 in Dallas, north of downtown. It plays a big part in the Irving Interchange and stays as a road for most of its life. Known as either Buckner Boulevard, Ledbetter Drive, Northwest Highway, and Arbor Avenue, or the Great Trinity Forest Way. Intersecting with State Highway 78 in East Dallas, State Highway 183 in Irving, and uh, State Highway 114 in Irving. It's a big interchange. Um, I'm now like to expand on a few things, talk about a few things for now, because it seems as if this video is a little shorter than expected. Um, I like to talk a bit about um, Beltline Road, which actually intersects with lots of these. So, at least a few of these go through Beltline Road, uh, like per se, I'm pretty sure. 183. Possibly 114. I can't really get my mind around it because it's more of a um, of a not so uh, amazing thing. But yeah, uh, but there's lots to say. But there's not lots to say. Let me expand more on the interstate series and where it's been. So as you know. There should be a few more videos coming in the interstate series. The two states which could and I should be doing which should, which could be changed interchangeably are Illinois and Alabama. It's for sure those two states, Illinois and Alabama. And uh, those are the plans for future of uh, the history of uh, the future of the interstate series because I'm um, needs to return and I need to start posting more consistently this year. Well, uh, I'll also expand on maybe a few projects. I'll continue doing that too because variability with content is a kind of a problem. And I can't always do the interstate series because time might not always be on my side. So I might just do project videos uh, to get content out. And uh, Once again, thank you for all the support. Thank you for everything. Uh, thank you for the views. Um, yeah, please share this video. And yes, this is more of a... This video is back in slideshow format. And most videos are going to be back in slideshow format because... I don't know, slideshow format works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. And yeah, you can't remember all the information. Once again, loop 202 loop 101 and loop 303 which i can say um i did i did uh, explore more of that and it's still under construction you know extension like, you know it's just like as most of these are because most of these you either have been the freeway portions either have been extended or are going to be extended um so yeah these are the, this is stuff like of state highways. I just want to explore uh, all the highways around the interstates mentioned in the Texas and uh, Arizona videos because I might do this for more states, you know, expand on uh, the roads around the interstates because it's quite an interesting spinoff, I believe. Once again, um, uh, yes, it's been me, Lexiobo. Thank you, and uh, I'll probably see you all next week.
if I have time. Subject: What many organizations made to accommodate, build, and take care of them, like the NTAA, um, the Harris County Toll Account, uh, Harris County Toll Authority, and uh, more. So those are the major ones I can name off the top of my head. Also, with the Express Lane System, uh, the Central, which works with Express, you know, to they're kind of located in Spain, but they work with Weber here in uh, here in Texas, and uh, there's lots of tollways here. But uh, but the first toll, the first system of tollways I talk about is Houston. Houston is a very interesting place with the tollways because there are lots of them, and Houston is a place with lots of freeways because it's basically the epitome of freeways. And there's so many out there that that you would actually um. You actually be surprised by how many they are. So first, we'll start with the Sam Houston Tollway, which forms a loop around uh, Houston, outside of the loop, outside of Loop uh, 610, also known as I 610. Um, it runs. It was initially, it was initially meant to be a freeway, but recession in the 70s and lots of things associated with that stopped it from happening and turned it more into a, a turned it more into an obsolete project. But luckily, they made it a tollway, and they managed to find land to build it, and they built it starting like the 1980s, 1970s, late 19, no, early, late 1970s to, to, that, to late 2000s, and uh, it was built in phases, because many tollways are built in phases, and it runs for an expansive amount of time, with a project being uh, currently happening on the... I think on Houston, it like it's the Channel River that there's a project going on there, and it hasn't finished yet, but it's been conceptualized for a long time. Because uh, as a, cause the very large and long-running tollway with intersections with I-10, um, I-69, pretty sure, I-69, I-45, and also intersects with the other tollways we'll talk about. In video next i'll have to get next i'll go on to next we'll talk about the grand parkway which is another outer loop which also which is not completed yet but it's going to be complete in probably the next 20 years because most of the loop is finished and uh, what i can say about that is um it's a loop outside the loop already formed by the sam houston tollway because if you see Sam Houston Tollway, right here, the Grand Park Grand Parkway goes immediately outside that, and it's quite amazing what happened. And uh, and uh, and it's meant to kind of for like that urban sprawl effect, because everyone talks about urban sprawl a lot, but this is a major example of it, because these, because these two, because Houston having three loops is absolutely crazy in my opinion but I guess they just do that uh, we can also talk about next we also told was like West Park uh, Tomball Parkway Tomball Tollway and also um, Fort Bend Tollway they might not be the most important tollways but they do get you places and uh, and that's what and, that and those are very important to the city but the most important things are the express lanes, which can be found on basically every major Houston interstate or freeway, including I-69, I-45, uh, I-10, and uh, State Highway 288, and also on also there's sometimes occasionally on uh, I-610. Uh, express lanes make an interesting combination because it's very it's meant to alleviate uh, congestion during peak hours. Whether this works or not, more research will be done on that because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It kind of depends on how they're used because calling it, uh, calling it a, a carpool lane sometimes doesn't work because traffic during rush hour always will be extreme and sometimes extending the freeway might not be the solution in some cases as most people like to say because 
dispensing fluids and something that's kind of very scrutinized as of nowadays, where people actually starting to be open to other ideas of how to get traffic better, like rail, uh, more pedestrian access in the city, and making a place actually walkable. But um, I think that's about it for Houston because Houston is amazing, it's very big, and it has lots of freeways that uh, gen that most people outside Texas would be very, very concerned with. And now moving on, I'll move on to um, I'll move on to San Antonio because San Antonio really doesn't have much going on in it except for like a HOV lane stuff like that on I-35. There's also I-410, also I-10 goes through there too, and uh, and not much goes on there except tollways because there's not really tollways and much tolled lanes on a freeway to kind of help with the traffic and stuff. But what? But while Houston does have lots of tollways, I think uh, Dallas Fort Worth Metro has lots of tollways too because you can kind of see it everywhere. Because you can go to lots of freeways that were turned into tollways eventually like State Highway 121, S uh, State Highway 360 or like Texas 360, Texas 121 and others because um, Texas uh, once Texas 121 it usually goes to the areas of Grapevine, uh, Fort Worth and Bedford Lewis that area and and from on and like if you go north if you go like a if you go oh well if you go north instead of south it turns into the Sam Rayburn tollway which it has interchanges with um like interchanges with Dallas Parkway also has a Dallas North tollway President George's tollway I-35E and more cause these tollways kind of help form the loop and the uh, decently traveled on even though people prefer to use freeways more because there are lots of tollways in the Dallas Fort Worth Metro with a lot more being planned and uh, lots of expansion coming to the area because for example Loop 9 is basically just a continuation of President George Bush toll uh, turnpike which ends up going a little more which ends up going east is an eastern extension or southern extension because you know it kind of it starts off from where it ends at I-30 in, in Garland and it moves quite a lot it goes through Sunnyvale, Ski, and then and it shifts towards other places too because they're planning lots of tollways and tollways have become a massive part of what they want to do because the main thing with tollways is that they're kind of made to be paid off but it didn't always work that way because everyone knows everyone who lives in Dallas probably knows about I-30 I-30 was initially known as a Dallas Fort Worth turn park, turnpike from I-35E westward and it was a and it's one example of a tollway that actually got paid off and turned into a freeway because currently they have plans on actually starting scrapping all turnpike interchanges because loop 12 is an example of one uh, it's scheduled to be reconstructed starting in 2027. Uh, there's also Texas 360 one I talked about. That one's nearly done, but it was also an old turnpike style interchange. And there are also lots of other examples I can uh, name because Hampton Road, uh, there's Hampton Road because it's very classic -y. and there's Fort Worth Avenue because it really does sometimes look like a turnpike, even though it has been modernized in lots of aspects. That's what we're turnpike has had to go, and I-30, I guess, Tom Landry Freeway is kind of the new norm there. Uh, but all I have to say about tollways is that there are lots of them in Texas. You can find them in random places in Texas because they're being built everywhere, and tollways are kind of that new way they're using to actually try expand the metro because as you can see with the Dallas North Tollway they actually managed to extend it they're going to extend it all the way to nearly to Oklahoma even though it starts in Dallas and uh, I find that very interesting because that's the ultimate plan they're gearing at 
and uh, i6 and uh, i610 multiple express lanes lots of express lanes on all these uh, freeways there's also a part of it because uh, one thing I need to elaborate on is the tech express lane system tech express lane system is kind of the kind of makes the express lanes a little separate from the uh, freeways in some cases because you can see on I-635 in Dallas uh, west of US-75 the express lanes are completely different they're under the main lanes and they have their own exits and their own uh, and their own direct exits to some places because this is kind of common because you can see with the North Terran Express like you go on I-820 and then you'll see that oh they'll get a direct exit from the express lanes to that specific street instead of having you detour back onto the main lanes and taking the front drove and this is becoming quite normal because they kind of use these to make express lane exits to other freeways express lane exits to that and it kind of all connects if you kind of start from maybe start from 635 west of US 75 you can get all the way to I-35E which takes you to 12 which also ends up taking you to 114 and 183 which ends up taking you to I-35W but first you have to go to I-820 so it's kind of a system that all connects and it's also being expanded out and tollways in Texas are a very interesting thing because they cost money and uh, not many people like them because rates are increasing and everything rates are increasing and if you want to drive on one of these because the more they get extended the more miles you can drive to get to them and they're using tollways and to connect cities and things like that like the Gateway Alliance Freeway. It's a freeway for now, but it's going to be a tollway eventually. Even though they open the main lanes. And it kind of shows you how much they're planning around tollways because they're using it to get money to fund all these freeway projects because the um, economy isn't looking very good. And I guess that's the excuse they're kind of using to fund these billion dollar projects you see on the other freeways like. Uh, like the construction of I-69, the construction of uh, the I-820 and I-20 I and the US-287 project. Lots of these projects are kind of funded by these tollways because they use them to get money to do these projects because they want profit in return for all they get. And uh, I don't know when next I'll post, but I'll try to post soon, try to post next week. And hopefully the video, and hopefully soon I'll talk about how the I-635 each project actually and managed to turn around their horrible decline because it was looking very bad but in 2024 they actually managed to get more complete than they did before and most of the years combined um this has been another video and uh thank you for watching if you actually stayed around and uh, i know it's kind of boring but i'll try to make it more interesting this is my first video i actually edited so um see ya